Hey guys, Chris here, and today I want to take you on a little bit of an overview to explain some reasons why you might want to use Linux as a main operating system, or one of your operating systems if you like to dual boot, and also explain some reasons why a lot of people should probably stay away from Linux and actually not use it, stick with Windows instead. So because I, I don't want people who can't really handle it to just go wipe their hard drive clean and boot up Linux and then be confused as hell, especially if they tried to use a distribution like Arch Linux, I'm going to get into the reasons why you shouldn't use Linux first. Firstly, if you are someone who is prone to frustration, it's not really that smart of an idea to go and use many distributions of Linux. Ubuntu is probably the most user friendly, but as I just mentioned, other distributions like Arch, you don't even install it with a graphical user interface. You basically have to know commands or at least know how to find the Arch install script online um, to really get that installed. And then other distributions, you might be able to easily install it with a graphical user interface. But if you really want to get your computer all set up with everything you need to, uh, update the kernel, update all your software, then it's really a good idea to know how to use terminal or at least have the willingness to learn how to use the terminal. In Linux, when you're a Linux user, you boot up into the terminal, which is what I'm using right now to type this, uh, I guess you would call it a text document in Windows. And um, it's really, a, it becomes kind of a primary way of navigating. More and more, um, the more and more you use Linux, the more you realize you can actually get things done faster just by using the terminal. In some cases, yeah, the GUI works fine in it, like booting up a web browser, that's really convenient and probably faster than using the terminal. But then other things like when you want to mess with a bunch of settings, it's just better to know where they are and how to go edit them with the terminal, knowing how to um, boot up programs and all that other kind of stuff. You can still use um, the GUI interface, especially if you're just getting used to Linux, um, but at the end of the day, if you want to be a very efficient Linux user, you have to have some technology, uh, te you have to be somewhat, <laughs> somewhat technologically savvy, there we go, or um, at least have the willingness to learn how these commands work, how the operating system works, and all that other stuff, otherwise you'll be confused and you'll be frustrated. Um, so if you want to be the kind of person who wants to point and click at everything and maybe you use Windows currently and you know about the command prompt but you never ever want to touch that, then yeah, to reiterate, you might be the kind of person who doesn't really want to go to Linux because the terminal is very useful and very important to uh, Linux operations. Uh, if you are a hardcore gamer or uh, just someone who has specific games they want to play, maybe you only play League of Legends, um, you may just want to stick with Windows because Linux is not really primarily a gaming platform. They have been adding a lot of games, porting uh, games over to Linux, but I, the majority of games still really do not uh, function on Linux normally. Now, there is something called Wine, which allows you to emulate Windows games inside of Linux, but it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be quite as good. Um, I think I've had League of Legends working fully at one point, but you have to go through a lot of configuration settings to actually get it to work, and that means you have to do a lot of lookup. Whereas on Windows, you can just install League of Legends normally. You don't have to emulate it because you're playing on the operating system it was intended for. Now. If you want to play games, but you also might be a tech geek, or you're studying for classes to learn Linux and that kind of thing, uh, you can always just dual boot Windows and Linux. Uh, usually, it's recommended that, and I'm not going to get into how to dual boot, but it's usually recommended that you have Windows installed first, and then you install Linux on top of that to another partition. Uh, if you don't understand that, that's fine. It's not really relevant here. Just, um, you can always have Windows and Linux. You can get the best of both worlds if that's your thing and it's my thing too because I like games. So if you're the kind of person who is more likely to call tech support or ask, um, I don't know, your older brother for help or something like that all the time and you don't really like Google searching a lot of your own problems or going on YouTube to look up these tutorials, then uh, you might be more prone to be the kind of Windows person as opposed to Linux. When you use Linux, um, 
the operating system isn't usually unstable, but it's really easy to mess things up. And some of the error messages can be rather cryptic. And if you don't necessarily know what it means immediately, uh, you might have to do a little digging. You might have to go online and search three or four forum threads to actually figure it out to get it working perfectly um, to suit your needs. So if you're not really willing to do that, you might want to stick away from Linux. Okay, another thing. If you are anti-hipster, and I say this jokingly, of course, Linux still pales in popularity compared to Windows and even Mac OS, I believe. Um, the reason people write software for Windows is because it's popular. It's really easy for the average user. Linux historically has been meant more for geeky type of types of people, engineers, computer, uh, computer guys, computer tech support, or uh, network administrators. Uh, those types of people, the people who can really understand uh, things like mathematics and how computers work. Now, over the years, they've been making Linux a lot more of a uh, operating system that just anybody can use, easy to install. Um, you know, uh, just click on the web browser and boot it up, same as Windows, that kind of thing. And they have that now. So it, the basic operations of Linux and most distributions now are actually pretty easy, but it's still not quite as simple as Microsoft, especially if you're used to Microsoft operating systems, the Windows series or Mac even, learning a whole new operating system does take a little bit of time. And if you wanna be kind of on the outs, using Linux is a good thing because good chances, unless your friends are all geeks, 90% of them probably use Windows. Okay, so uh, if you are a Windows user and you happen to like how in Windows 8 and I think in the technical preview now, Windows 10, um, you can integrate your Hotmail or Microsoft email accounts really easily into Windows. And on top of that, you have the Windows Store, uh, also ties into those accounts, keeps track of your purchases, allows you to download software right out of that Windows Store. And you really like that, you won't have that um, at least right out of the box in the same way as uh, you do in Windows. So you're giving up the Microsoft account integration because it's not a Microsoft OS. However, if you do pick up um, probably the simplest and easiest to learn um, Linux operating system in Ubuntu, which is also the most popular, I think. I could be wrong on that, but I would definitely recommend Ubuntu for the beginning user. You can use the Ubuntu market marketplace. It's not quite as thorough as the Microsoft Store. That said, personally, I've never liked the Microsoft Store all that much anyway. I'm more of a Steam or Amazon guy. Um, and of course, since those are web services or clients you can download, by the way, Linux does have Steam, just doesn't have as many games as the Windows version, um, then it's kind of irrelevant to me, but it might not be for you. Okay, so now that I've scared half of you away or more, um, here are some reasons why you would want to actually use Linux. I do think it's a really cool operating system, just can be frustrating at times. So firstly, it's highly customizable and there's tons of variant distributions because Linux Basically, all of it is open source. Uh, you have people from around the world who contribute um, to making each distribution of Linux work, whether it's Ubuntu, whether it's Fedora, whether it's Arch Linux or Manjaro, like I'm running right now. Martin Manjaro, by the way, is Arch-based, but a lot easier to install and mess with. It's like Arch Linux for noobs. <laughs> anyway, um, you have a bunch of different variant distributions which have all these different kinds of packages. So you have a lot of options to choose from. There's lots of different desktop managers like Openbox, um, FXCE, I believe that's the one I'm running right now, and uh, Mint, which is another very popular Linux distribution. And on top of that, you have all of these programs, most of which are free, that uh, you can easily install through the package managers that Linux uses. So really, although when you install Linux, it's kind of a blank slate, um, you can really customize it to be just about anything you want. And you can make it a lot more like Windows than um, it might initially seem. It just, it will never be Windows. It'll always be using the Linux terminal. Actually, I don't know. There might be a, there might be a way to make the commands in Linux like Windows, but, I'll look that up another time. The point is, lots of different distributions, several package managers, 
lots of ways to customize your desktop, tons of free software, and really Linux becomes uh, basically whatever you want it to be. And that's very, very cool. Uh, secondly, in my opinion, the Linux terminal is much better than the Windows command prompt, at least the basic version that the average user may go into every now and then. Um, I've just always found that the nuances of command prompt were kind of a pain in the ass, but with Linux, and this may be more of a personal preference, I just think that the, the commands make sense over time. It's easier to navigate, to get what you want, to put in a command and get exactly what you want out of it. That may just be because, you know, I, I use the Linux terminal more often, but I don't even really want to go into the Windows CMD. A command prompt when I'm using Windows just regularly as a regular user it, just because it's like oh it, it feels painful I just want to click on everything but in Linux it's actually like oh yeah I can do that in the Linux terminal oh I got you know 30 programs installed really easily using the package manager and that's really cool so I, I like the Linux terminal a lot I think it's great it's helpful and it's also crucial for getting things done inside of Linux so uh, to go along with that, you can install lots of software really, really quickly inside of the Linux terminal. And these are going to be using uh, the package managers, including uh, Pac-Man or Yaourt if you're using Arch or Manjaro, or if you're using a, um, I believe it would be a Debian-based distribution, like Debian itself or Ubuntu, uh, then you use apt-get instead. Now, they basically work the same. You're just like, okay, type in the command apt-get. Um, dash a couple options and then space the name of the package you want to install and then you'll hit yes to that and then bam it will it'll get you the program itself all of the requirements it needs download everything and start for you all at once it's, it, what i say it's easier than the uh or the windows installer where you just go next 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 uh, you know in some ways it can be quicker especially if you want to install a bunch of different things and you can always write a script so that you can install 50 different things, copy and paste that onto the internet so that everybody can do that too. Um, or have it for yourself when you need to you reuse that same command or those same series of commands on another system. Uh, so the package managers for Linux, very, very nice top end quality. And uh, but, 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 uh, yeah, just as an example, um, if you want to fully synchronize the databases so that it's looking for the uh, uh, the, the right packages, the most up-to-date packages at the right addresses, and you want to upgrade your system and install everything at once, when you're using Arch, you just go sudo pacman syu, hit yes to the I confirm I want to do all this stuff, and then let it do its, let it do its thing for like um, 10, 20 minutes, and you're good to go. You just fixed a lot of your computer or got it up-to-date, rather. And that's very, very cool. Okay, so moving on from that. Um, when you use Linux, because it does kind of make you use the terminal a lot more often, especially if you want to be efficient, it can help you get used to a lot of the things that you use in scripting or modifying settings, uh, especially in the notepad kind of way. Like you go into uh, the terminal, you use nano like I'm using right now to have all this text on screen, and you might make some changes to a script that you can use to um, accomplish certain tasks later on. Or you go into the Apache settings, um, and you would pretty much do this the same way on Windows for Apache, but you can go into Apache and um, change some of the server uh, settings so that Apache actually works, or it works with the modules you need, or maybe you need to add xdebug, and that would actually go to the PHP file, not the Apache settings, but close enough. In any case, uh, when you're using the terminal, it kind of gets you used to a lot of the same commands you use in scripting that you might need to modify settings on a server, and if you're going down the path of becoming a tech nerd, whether it's just professionally or... Um, if you're going to be doing it for fun, then Linux, you know, you'll you'll start learning a lot really quickly, a lot more than you do just by pointing and clicking and relying on uh, the start menu for everything inside of uh, Windows. So that's really cool. It helps you get used to not relying on the graphical user interface for everything. And once you actually do get used to these commands, um, you will realize that you can actually get a lot more done in many cases through the terminal than you can 
um, just by pointing and clicking on everything. I mean, for instance, it's a lot slower to move the mouse than it is to hit like two keys on the keyboard. So yeah, there you go. If you do that, multiply that by 500,000 times, you can imagine the time saving. So uh, yeah, that's really just a uh, quick over overview. I actually, I don't know how long this has been going on for, probably 15 minutes. But yeah, a quick overview of uh, my opinions as far as reasons why you would or would not want to use Linux. Of course, you can always go ahead and try uh, Linux out. You don't even have to necessarily install it um, on your hard drive directly as the primary uh, partition, primary operating system. You could download something called VirtualBox and then install Linux right on top of that. And I believe I just had a tutorial on my channel about that. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, from there, you can basically test Linux from within Windows and see if you like it. Um, I would not recommend until you're sure that you go ahead and wipe everything out. And maybe you want to dual boot as you get kind of used to Linux. Maybe you want to use it for some things, but you still want to primarily use Windows just because you're used to it. Whatever is good. But if you do think you're the type of person that may like Linux, there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, it's highly customizable. It's really cool. And uh, developers are expanding it to be more and more uh, close to, I, I guess, like Windows in terms of being a typical user's operating system. So will, one day, will Linux one day be as good or better? Um, maybe. I mean, some people would already argue that. Uh, it depends on what your purposes are. And uh, yeah, going through this video, um, I hope I've given you at least an idea of uh, which way you may want to go, depending on your preferences. So I've been Chris. I know that was really long winded. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. Of course, if you do like this tutorial and you want to see more, I'll be coming out with some Linux tutorials now that I've gotten OBS to work with Linux. Yeah. Um, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and you can also uh, donate to the Patreon at patreon.com slash Chris tutorials if you'd like. Aside from that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time.